Welcome back, friends. Happy New Year, and welcome to 2023 in our little homestead. At the end of December 2021, Josh and I sat down and made a list of goals for 2022. We split them up between 12 months and then did our best to complete each month's goals on time. As we all do, some goals became lost in the shuffle quite quickly, but others we achieved. It was very rewarding to sit down together over the holidays this past few weeks and see what all we've been able to accomplish from our list for 2022. We talked about some new goals we wanted to work towards, brought some of our old goals that didn't get finished or started last year forward to the new list. One goal I made for 2022 that I did accomplish and wanted to bring to 2023 was my birthday card habit. loved receiving birthday cards in the mail as a child and also as a teen and still as an adult. As far as I can remember, I never met my great grandmother, but every year, a day or so before my birthday, I received a colorful birthday card from her. My Nana also always does this and it's one of those simple touches I have always loved. So I decided I didn't want to miss sending people birthday cards as well and came up with a little system that has worked very well for me and I thought I'd share it with y'all today. birthday cards. Um, had all kinds of scrapbooking supplies and stamps and glues and things that made things pop off the card and all that stuff. And while I have enjoyed that hobby over the years, I found it necessary to kind of downsize um, and simplify my craft supplies over the last year or so, just so I have more time for a few other hobbies that rank higher on my priority list than making cards. Um, but also that I just enjoy more and I did really want to continue sending birthday cards because it means a lot to me to do that. So I got a little discouraged back in the fall thinking I just don't have the energy and the time and the creative energy to make all the birthday cards again. And so I started looking uh, at what kind of options there were for, you know, buying a box of cards and I found that actually you can buy a box of really beautiful birthday cards or thank you cards for a very reasonable price and they come with envelopes and a cute little sticker online. Uh, one day I will probably get back into making my homemade cards, but this season of life this is a way that I can continue the um, routine of doing this that I really love and also be able to be reasonable and not stay up till midnight every night for a week trying to make all my cards. <laughs> So how my system works is nothing um, mind-blowing, it's pretty simple, but it's something that I never really thought to do, um, so maybe it will be new to you as well. So basically in the past I've kept a piece of paper that has a calendar of the whole year on one sheet of paper. and. I lost it <laughs> and so I have moved to a spreadsheet on my computer because I don't lose my computer but you can totally do this with a sheet of paper it can be something you print out or you could just even write it out on a piece of lined notebook paper and it can be as simple as you just either on your spreadsheet or on your piece of paper you mark out the days of January so you would write January and then you would write I think January has 30 days, right? 30 days has September, April, June, and November. So January has 31 days. So you would write out one through 31, and then anyone's birthday that you want to send a card to in January, you would put their name next to the number 
that matches. So on the 10th, if somebody's birthday is then, you would write Bob's name on the 10th and then you have their birthday in the calendar. Once you have everyone's birthdays inputted, then you can start getting ready to actually get all of your cards addressed. So what I like to do is in January, I look at my list and I go back and I think, were there any new babies born? Any new nieces or nephews? Um, so this year I had a couple of new family members to add to the list as well as our own little bear. Um, so I went ahead and I added those in so that I made sure I had everybody up to date. Um, I find when a baby's born, unless it's on a, a holiday or something like that, I have a hard time remembering because um, I'm just excited about the baby and I kind of forget to actually pay attention to what day it is. <laughs> um, so I have to go back usually and say, what actual day were they born on? And then I plug that into my sheet so that I have it every year. Um, this kind of calendar is sometimes called a rolling calendar or a Dutch calendar, I've heard it called, because the idea is that it, you don't start a new one or get a new one every year, you use the exact same one every year. So once you have your uh, names put into the correct dates, then what I do is, is it's as simple as going into January and I just scan through and I see, okay, I've got three birthdays, so I grab three cards. And then um, I don't write the card then. What I do is I put the card uh, for the person, I pick which one I want or I make which one I want for that person, then I put it in the envelope and immediately address it to that person, whether it's just their name if they live local or I put their actual address and my return address if I have to mail it. And then I go ahead and stamp it as well. And the reason I do this is I'm going to do all of the cards for the entire year right now in January. And I have a little holder you're going to see that I put them all in and it's sectioned up by the months. And the reason I do this is I'm excited about my cards now and I've got my brain put together enough to get everything together and do it. But come July, I may not have any stamps on hand. And if the envelope is already stamped, I'm much more likely to get it out on time and actually put it in the mailbox because it's ready to go and I don't have to run to the post office to get more stamps. The reason I don't write the card is because I don't know what I wanna to say to them in this very moment. Right now I'm working on the technical side of things. I'm picking a pretty card for that person and then I'm getting it addressed and stamped. But I like to give some time and attention to what I write in a person's card. So I have like 40 some cards I'm doing this year and to do all of them in one afternoon, nobody would get a, a heartfelt message. <laughs> so I like to leave the card blank and in January I will sit down a little closer to when I'm about to um, give the cards to the birthdays in January. Most of my birthdays in January I'm actually going to see in person instead of mailing them this year. So I'll write out their actual card here shortly and then I'll give it to them. And then each month at the beginning of the month what I do is I take the cards out for February like in the first couple of days of February and I write out a message in each card and then I get it ready and at the beginning of each month I go ahead and mail all of that month's cards and I know this is gonna drive some people crazy and other people are gonna love it I know that if their birthday is on the second the cards gonna be late and if their birthday is on the 30th it's gonna be really early and I'm okay with that <laughs> And that's okay if that doesn't work for you. For me, I found to stick to this habit of actually getting the cards in the mail and sent, I needed to make it a once a month um, routine. And so that's what's worked, worked best for me. I worried about it at first and I thought, you know what? I think people will just be excited to get a birthday card in the mail. I have a little holder with six pockets, so I double up each month um, so that there's two different months in the same pocket. And then that's pretty much my whole system. I hope this might be helpful for some of you. Um, and I hope you enjoy sending out your birthday cards. See you next time.